Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily. I am so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, I am going to do a flip through of three brand new little golden book junk journals. I have one, I have two, and I have three right here. They turned out so beautiful. I know you are going to enjoy this flip through. They are just absolutely gorgeous. So how about we get started and go through the pages? Thank you. I absolutely love how each one of these journals turned out. These bunny themed little golden books have been on my wish list, on my to-do wish list for a really long time. I was hoping to have finished these at the beginning, beginning of the year. We are now halfway through the year and I've just now completed them, but better late than never. Uh, let's start with this one. It is The Whispering Rabbit and the books measure about eight by six inches and they have a one inch spine. They vary a little bit. Sometimes they're one inch, sometimes they're one and two sixteenths of an inch, but approximately one inch. They each contain two signatures and they have been bound with embroidery floss. They do have a little bit of an alligator mouth and that's because I just love stuffing these little golden books with lots of ephemera, lots of pockets, tags, all kinds of great embellishments. I couldn't wait to use this cute little bunny ceramic pin that, excuse me, bead that I have been hoarding for a really long time. And that was really why I wanted to work on these cute little bunny journals for that reason alone, just so I can add that cute little bunny bead. This front cover has a photo mat that I have attached to the front cover. I love this look. I've done it in the past. And I know some of you may disagree because I'm covering up most of the cover. But remember, I'm giving these books a second chance when I purchased them. They were pretty beat up. And I'll point some of those blemishes out as we flip through the pages. Some are more blemished than others. But yeah, they're getting a second life. and. And now they can be used for more years to come. But it is absolutely beautiful. I love all of that dimension on the front cover. And then I've added this beautiful green satiny silk ribbon that I picked up at a shop in Salt Lake City. The inside cover I have left as it is. And I have lined it on the inside to reinforce it. And then I've added one of my little house envelope pockets. If you'd like to see how I made this cute little bunny themed little house envelope pocket, I will have that video linked up above for you. And this is like my little trademark now, these little house envelope pockets. I started making these um, a couple years ago, two or three years ago, and I have made every season, all occasions, and they are now included in every single journal that I make. I also made this uh, journaling card from watercolor paper, paper and I stamped a Stamping Bella image on it and tucked it into the pocket. I like to paper clip it into the first page of the junk journal with a large paper clip and this one will have a beautiful enamel heart charm dangling from it. It has a couple of hearts there and then that little other tag reads, I believe it reads handmade with love. It does, handmade with love. Now here is something new that I have just recently discovered and this is the art of edigami and I, you just don't know how much I love this. It is, I don't even know how to explain it. I came across it on YouTube and I just can't get enough of this type of art. It is Japanese postcard art and it's a very free form of art. And I've kind of just very loosely drawn a bird, added a beautiful quote that I came across on the internet. And then that little red stamp actually has my initials so that you know it was me. And I did all of that on a watercolor postcard. Each one of these journals will include one of my original edigami art postcards. So it's, it's just so perfect for these books. And I can't wait to work on more of these edigami postcards and uh, you'll see more of that in the future. And I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, yes, it is um, etigami, 
E-T-E-G-A-M-I. I'm showing you here that I added a little flip up, almost like a fabric flip, but it's just a 12 by 12 off cut piece of paper, which I embellished with some of these little clusters that I like making from paper scraps, literal paper scraps. I just dig into my scrappy box and attach about three papers with the stapler and then add a few more embellishments like die cuts, things like that. And that's what I've attached to the off cut. And then I just paper clipped it over that page. You'll see a lot of these little paper clusters throughout the journals. I use them as tuck spots, but then I've also used them on the edges and you'll see them like tabs and also double as a tuck spot. This is the title page of The Whispering Rabbit. It is an older book. I will have all of the details in the description area below. But if you have any questions at all or I missed something, please let me know in the comments section below. By the way, I want to know if you have worked on a little golden book yourself and if you have made your own junk journal or if you have purchased little golden book junk journals. Um, I'd like to know what you think and, you know, how... And if it's something that you would you would try making yourself. The pages, I've left all of the pages in the storyline. So you'll you'll see them in there mixed in with all of the other types of papers that I've used. This is an invoice booklet that I picked up at the thrift store. It cost me a dollar and it's a vintage little booklet from the 80s. And what I did is I did some stenciling and some stamping on the pages. And it was easier to do this while they were still attached to the booklet. And I just went one page at a time. I tried different stamping techniques. I also did some, stem, um, some stenciling. And then, and then I thought, why not use them in the junk journal pages? And so all I did is I detached the yellow, the white and the yellow copy, and then simply stapled it to the pages. The stapler is my friend. I love using it in the junk journal pages to attach um, embellishments. I'll have another video linked up above for you. These are um, faux jelly printed envelopes, which I created just a couple weeks ago. And I have that video, um, if you missed it up above, if you open up the description area and scroll down to the bottom of the description area, you will see all of the videos that I reference as I point up. Those are all also listed in this description area. And then if I miss anything during the first flip through, I'll make sure to mention it during the second and the third. These are vintage flashcards and I used some rub-ons on the front and the back of these cards. And oh my gosh, let me tell you how much I love how they turned out. Absolutely gorgeous. My favorite latest thing that I've done with these flashcards. And there's still plenty of room for journaling or adding pictures or just leaving it as it is as an embellishment in your junk journal. You'll see the this is the center of the first signature and it has a little dangly beads which you can also flip to the very top. This is a junk journal envelope pocket that I made from, I said junk journal, I meant junk mail, junk mail envelope pocket. I have a video for that, a similar video of how I make these also linked up above and again in the description area below. These are super easy to make from junk mail. They are lined on the inside and then embellished with stickers. So I'll have that similar video for you in the description area. And then I made a couple of tags and then grouped them together, stapled, just different uh, die cuts, and then tied them both with some beautiful sari silk, and then added a really pretty open gold, open heart charm to the sari silk super cute. This is a vintage invitation card and I've had this one for a while. The colors are gorgeous. It has a very soft palette and I want to say those are from the 80s. There are a variety of papers 
throughout this journal. So not only have I included all of the story pages, but there are also beautiful scrapbooking papers. There are vintage notebook papers, ledger paper, and also there's 100% cotton paper in here. And I love that as you're flipping through the pages, some of them have a different texture. And I love how you can feel the difference in each of the pages. And that, of course, makes it so much more interesting as you are flipping through them. I'm bringing up the vintage booklet that I used for this notebook paper. And it was intact. Every single page was still in this vintage notebook. I think I paid a dollar for this at the thrift store. And so each one of the journals will have one of these vintage notebook papers. And I love the color. It has a very soft green color, green hue to it. These are DIY journaling cards that I made from blank or plain lined Project Live cards. I did some stamping and then I did a little black doodly border all around the card and then just stapled a couple of die cuts a vellum die cut and then that beautiful gold glitter heart super easy then i made a tuck spot with some just little i think i had um some scrapbooking off cuts and that's how i made this tuck spot and then just paper clipped a few things that i had within reach you know things that i'm playing around that i make every now and again and they just kind of live on my desk for a little while those are the kind of things that i've paper clipped throughout the journal. This is a little sticker strip of faux tickets and those are from Your Creative Studio. Another DIY journaling card made by using Project Life, simple Project Life cards. I did some gold embossing with a beautiful stamp, literally a beautiful stamp. <laughs> and then I paper clipped a couple of hearts and did a doodly border all around that. And then this is another cluster that I have just added to the edge to make it look like a tab and then also serves as a tuck spot. So you'll see those throughout. And again, these are made by little junky bits that I just pull out of my scrappy box. And so that's what I do with a lot of the smaller scrap pieces of paper. I'll grab three or four little pieces of paper and then staple them together. And then when I get ready to use them in junk journals, I will embellish with other things like hearts and flowers and stickers and die kits and things like that. Cute little tag that I just paper clipped to the page. Vintage ledger paper. And then this is a 12 by 12 off cut from some of that same paper that I used as a, uh, as a full page in the junk journal. A second invoice sheet or, um, yeah, invoice, invoice, period, invoice, period, <laughs> which I stamped with that beautiful tulip stamp that I also picked up at the thrift store. And then this one also includes a French notebook paper, and it has a very beautiful floral, a subtle design that has been printed on it. And that one that notebook I picked up a couple years ago at a French boutique in Salt Lake City, Salt Lake County, called La Petite Maison. I know I, I've mentioned La, La Petite Maison many, many times. It's one of my favorite antique boutiques in Salt Lake County. So if you're ever in the area, go and look for them. La Petite Maison, a beautiful, beautiful little shop. This is the center of signature number two, and I like making these pockets. I just fold up the bottom about four inches and then cut a diagonal right at the center so that the pages don't buckle or the yeah, as you fold it so that the pockets don't buckle in the center. And then I decorated it with a beautiful doily and then stitched, machine stitched on the sides of the pockets. Another DIY project life um, card that has been stamped and doodled on and this is a beautiful cavallini postcard i have a collection of these that i have also been hoarding for a little while i love inserting different types of postcards in my junk journals and these are some of my favorite that i've been hoarding for a bit but they are just beautiful in the journals as well 
So those are some of my prized possessions that I'm including in the junk journals. Another junk mail envelope pocket, and this is an authentic vintage bingo card. Also from my stash, things that I've been kind of holding onto, just waiting, you know, for the perfect journal to, to put it into. And so I thought it was fitting for this one. And then another tag made from scrapbooking paper, super easy to make. If you're interested in seeing how I make these, I can show you how to make eight beautiful, I think it's eight, eight beautiful tags from one 12 by 12 sheet of paper. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comment section below. This was pretty. I love how those, all the pages just coordinated. You know, I go through and I select scrapbooking papers that, that I feel are going to match with the story pages. But then it always surprises me when I flip through that they just look so good together side by side. I created a tuck spot with a DIY Rolodex card embellished with stickers and then some muslin, muslin stamped fabric and then some beautiful, beautiful trim. And then I glued it down on two sides so it can be used as a tuck spot. This has another postcard and this is a postcard from the New York Botanical Garden. Also other postcards that I have been hoarding. I don't want to say hoarding because I'm I'm a collector and so a lot of the things that I have um I they're like prized possessions. They're part of my collection and I say hoard because you know that's just that's just what we say. We hoard our things. But it's not really hoarding. We're just collecting them because we just treasure and love them so much. But they're there are a few that I'm willing to let go and include in these junk journals. Here's a cute little treat pocket. I don't know where this came from. I think maybe my sister gave me those little treat pockets. And then in it, I have included a little um, scripture card. And then I just tucked it at the very top. And it's kind of being held in place so it doesn't fall all the way to the bottom of the treat box with a little paper clip. Then I've added some eyelash trim, a couple of no cards that I've paper clipped to the side. And that rainbow one is has a beautiful quote on the opposite side. I like including affirmation cards, scripture cards, and quote cards in my junk journals. If you are familiar with my style, I do that in all of my journals. I've added a little handmade just for you sticker and then signed and dated the journal. And then these are beautiful Easter cards that I've had for quite a while. And I glued the envelope on three sides so that I could still use it as a pocket. And then these are large hearts that I picked up at the teacher section in Hobby Lobby. And then I took one of my favorite stencils and did some texture paste with that stencil and I love how that turned out and I'm just tucking it right behind that envelope. And then in the pocket, you'll see a beautiful bunny themed greeting card. It is blank inside. So a perfect spot for journaling, documenting, memory keeping. And then on the front of that envelope, I added a little wooden bunny. I glued it, has a background with rub on transfers. And then I also added rub on transfers to the top of that little bunny. And I just love how that turned out. And each journal will have one of those bunnies. They're all going to be very similar uh, in, in design, but will vary slightly. But they're, they're quite similar. This is journal number two. And this one is called Peter, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. And you'll see an acrylic charm that is dangling off of that green satin ribbon. Those are beautiful. And then the cluster of paper flowers with, with, the, um, with that frame and then the rub-ons on the frame. I just love doing that, especially with the little golden books. This book belonged to someone named Dylan, a child named Dylan. And I don't cover that. I try not to. But if it has a name on it, I will leave it there on display because this was treasured 
by someone a long time ago and I think it's just a nice little touch to leave that there. Another one of my original Edegami Japanese art postcards. I just love this. And again, all of the details of the tale of the Peter Rabbit, for example, the year of this book will be in the description down below. And also, they all have somewhere between 72 and 80 pages. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but I'll also list all of that information in the description area below. More of my DIY tags tucked into the junk mail envelope pocket. I have two other videos, two other videos which I have made prior to this. The first video is showing you how I create the cover by saving or leaving the golden spine intact. And I will have that also in the description area below, but I will link it up above as well. And then I have a second video where I show you how I add the signatures to the cover. And I will also link that for you right above. And again, just open up the description area and you'll see all of the videos. But if you want more information, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment or a question in the comment section because I reply to each and every one of your comments and your questions, okay? Um, even the ones that are not so nice, I reply to those too. But if it's mean, I will delete your comment. If it's not nice, I'll reply to it. But if it's mean, I'll delete it. <laughs> you know, because I think that we can agree to disagree on some things, okay? I'm okay with that. But when some of the comments are nasty, I, I just can't. I can't, you know, it's not fair. It's not fair to me. I'm providing free content and sharing what I do. And then it's not fair to you to see that negativity, um, you know, on, on my videos. And so... I have had to delete a lot of videos, excuse me, a lot of uh, comments because they're just flat out mean. But for the most part, um, I'm very grateful that you are so kind. You guys are so amazing um, with, with your support and with your kindness and your kind comments. And it really does warm my heart when I read your comments and you share with me how my videos have helped you. Um, get out of like, you know, if you're stuck, if, if you've lost your mojo, or it's inspired you to work on certain projects, that warms my heart. Because that's why I do this. I do this because I have a passion for paper crafting. And I'd like sharing what I do. And what I do here on YouTube is free. I don't, you know, I don't have a membership. I don't have a Patreon. I do this for free. Um, and I want to keep it that way. But the only thing that I ask from you is that, you know, you you keep the comments um, kind, respectful. Um, and, but if you love my content, I would greatly appreciate it if you share my videos with your family and friends so they can also see this. Um, and then like and comment, of course, because the more you engage in my videos, the more that YouTube puts them in the algorithm for other people to see as well. And so that is um, your way of supporting my channel so that I can continue to grow and so that I can hopefully bring inspiration to other people as well. I know I kind of got sidetracked there for a minute. I apologize. <laughs> um, but you can see how I've included a lot of the beautiful uh postcards in there. They'll have a different design on the facade, but there's a Cavallini postcard in each of these journals. Also a New York um, Botanical Garden postcard in here. Uh, there's an old recipe card in there. It's not quite vintage, but it's old. And then a lot of my DIY journaling cards, tuck spots, random things like this that I just paper clip. You know, like this little pink thing 
pink little card that was embossed with a rose and have some gold wax on it. It was it was just in a little a little dish of embellishments on my desk and I thought I'm just going to grab you and paper clip you to <laughs> to this page and it works and it makes it look so pretty. And I really do love that vintage invitation card. I love going if you want to know my secret, I'm going to tell you my secret. I like going to the thrift store, and when I go to the thrift stores, I go straight to the paper section. And that is where I find vintage recipe cards, vintage greeting cards, and all kinds of vintage papers. So if you want to know where you can get your hands on some pretty inexpensive paper goods, go to the paper section of your thrift store where they keep the notebooks and the, the stationery and the greeting cards and just thumb through it all. Just take your time because I have found some amazing vintage recipe cards and vintage greeting cards by thumbing through that section of the thrift stores. It is my favorite thing to do, you guys. And this is Junk journal number three, The Rabbit's Adventure. This one does not have a photo mat frame on the front cover because I only had two from the thrift store. But I did add a metal book plate and then I embossed the word notas, which means notes, notas, and then added beautiful paper flowers all around the lower left-hand corner. And I just love, love how that turns out. That turned out. And then I also have a little charm that I've attached to that beautiful green silky satin ribbon. I love this ribbon. Did I tell you the ribbon is from La Petite Maison? Oh, look, and this book belonged to Levi. And I think Levi wrote his name with crayon. Do you think I'm going to cover that up? No, it is so cute. I had to leave it there. So cute. And then this is that watercolor card, journaling card that has been stamped with a Stamping Bella stamp. By the way, I have an Amazon affiliate link in the description area below. If you'd like to see some of the tools that I use, some of the stamps and tools that I use to make my journals or my projects, you can click on that link. And it'll take you to my Amazon storefront. I do have to let you know that if you do make a purchase through by using my Amazon affiliate link, I will earn a small commission, but that doesn't affect you at all. But if you do that, I do appreciate you purchasing using my link. Thank you so much. Big hearts to you. Big hearts. And then again, more of those just random things that I've paper clipped and then of course added the recipe card and my DIY journaling cards. Beautiful scrapbooking papers throughout. Someone asked if I leave all of the storybook papers. Yes, I do. do. I know I mentioned that earlier, but I really do. Um, the complete story is there. This book has a has bonus pages, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. My, I think my the flashcards is my favorite thing in these journals. The flashcards with the rub-on transfers that is my favorite, and I am so glad that I did that to those because they turned out beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So the bonus pages that we'll get to in just a moment, this um, it has this book at the very end has like a subscription advertising pages. There's about four pages at the very end. And I actually thought about removing those and then and then you know I was like, why would I remove that? It's part of the book. It was part of the story. And it's pretty cool because I just left it in there. And you'll see, you'll see when we get there. It's pretty cool that um, that, that was part. I've never seen that in, in the little golden book, so that was really nice. Look at this cute little puppy, puppy paper. It is from a notepad that I have. And so I thought it would be perfect because look, there's a little puppy on that opposite page. And so I just took one of those note cards and just paper clipped it onto the page. 
and then just random clusters with random die cuts and random stickers and little ephemera pieces that have just been attached to the little clusters. Another DIY Rolodex card. I have dies that cut out the Rolodex, but I also have a lot of vintage authentic Rolodex cards because Rolodex cards is my jam. I absolutely love working with Rolodex cards, the original ones and also the ones that I die cut. And I love embellishing them and I love adding them to my Rolodex files. I actually have a Rolodex card file that I bought in 1997, 98, which is still living on my desk to this day because I use it for my real estate work and it is on my desk. And then I have a couple others that I use for my artsy altered Rolodex cards. So I love Rolodexes, you guys. I have, I have a uh, Heidi Swap one too. And then on some pages, I added some rub-on transfers and also some butterfly stickers. They don't all have them. Um, when I was working, I was kind of just reaching for some things to see what else I can embellish the pages with. I really do love how the center pages turn out. I like to make sure that my center pages of the signatures really pop and really stand out from the other pages. And so if it doesn't have pockets, it'll have like a beautiful design layout in the center. Here is another of the Cavallini cards, Cavallini postcard. And then this is the um, New York Botanical Garden postcard which you can use as journaling spots, or you can actually just uh, send them to someone if you like. Love those gold butterfly stickers. I pick those up at the Dollar Tree. They don't always have them, but whenever I stop in at the Dollar Tree, I always go looking to see, and sometimes I'll get lucky and I'll find one pack of them. But yes, they, they are beautiful. And here are the advertisement pages. Aren't these so cool? And it even has this perforated card that, or that you can cut out. I don't know if you can still subscribe to these, but it's there. And can you believe I thought about taking these out? I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I left them as part of the book. So that's a nice little bonus with this little golden book, The uh, Rabbit's Adventure. So I truly hope that you enjoyed the flip through of these three little golden books. I had so much fun putting these together. So I hope that these inspire you so that you can create your own. And if it's not a little golden book, I hope that it brings you inspiration to create anything, something beautiful um, by repurposing, reusing, or just creating from scratch. You guys stick around. Don't go away. I'm going to flip the camera over because I've got more information for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me as we flip through the pages of these three beautiful little golden book junk journals. I am so happy that you spent some time here with me. One thing I did not mention is that I will have these little golden book junk journals available in my Etsy shop on Saturday, June 15th. So if you'd like to go take a look, I will have that link down below so that you can go hop on over and take a look at these books there. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave your question or your comments in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. You guys are awesome and I am so appreciative that you are here with me today. You guys take care and I'll see you next time. Bye!